Hi everyone, Marco Boy here, standing in front of a giant mining truck outside the Britannia Mining Museum, Britannia Beach on beautiful Howe Sound, British Columbia. We're just north of Vancouver, we're just south of Squamish, and this mine was operating here for about a hundred years until the early 1970s when it closed down. The beauty of this museum is that just about all of the equipment and the original tunnels and buildings are still intact. So come with us. We're going on an underground tour. There's lots to see. Okay, cool. So, um... He's got the toughy bits <laughs> off his ears. <laughs> First quick stop here. Uh, everybody always knows what this is. This is our explosives magazine. This is where we would have kept all the dynamite. So pretty simple concept. Here in Britannia, we're actually going to drill holes into the rock. And we fill those holes with dynamite, blast away, and that's how we're going to keep. That's how we're going to create all of the tunnels. Dynamite was the door was always kept closed. There's actually a very good reason why this door was kept closed, and that's actually because of all of the water and all of the moisture. So you guys can hear, you can see it. When you get underground, it gets really wet. Problem is, dynamite doesn't like to get wet. It gets wet, uh, it becomes unstable. So the clumsy miner picks up a piece of wet dynamite, drops it, knocks it against something, while well, it would have exploded. So yeah, that was actually the leading cause of death down here is problems with their dynamite. Now what they found is that they put a little light there inside, kept the door closed, one little light bulb is actually gonna generate heat. Yeah, that's all the heat that they needed to keep the dynamite nice and dry in there. Next we're gonna head to our drilling chamber and take a look at some of the different tools that they use to make those holes in the rock. All right, so our drilling chamber. Uh, before we get started with the drills, uh, I want to tell you guys a little bit more about the tunnels we're in today. Uh, originally blasted out in 1914, but these tunnels, they weren't blasted out to be mined for minerals. So I didn't find any copper, any zinc, any gold or silver inside these tunnels. Uh, they were actually just blasted out to be used as storage. The tunnels that our miners are in are actually a lot smaller than this as well. No bigger than six feet wide, six feet high. Oh. Based on the area you see on the inside of the painted line. Look at it. I know it's rusty, but it's also big and it's heavy. It weighs 300 pounds. These guys actually had to bring all of this equipment with them in the morning. At the end of their shift, bring it out of the tunnels as well. So here we go. The wood drill. Three, two, one. That is our wood drill. Yeah, I know, it seems really cool for about three to five seconds, right? Yeah, yeah the guys are going to be down here in their entire eight hour shift. The entire time they're using a wood drill, no hearing protection. I'm going to demonstrate the jack light drill for you guys. These drills get newer. Yeah, they don't get any quieter. <laughs> Themselves come down here, find their bullseye, drill 35 holes, 8 feet deep, and at the end of the shift, hop on the train and make their way out of the tunnel. The blast of the dynamite, the blast of the rock, that's only done in between the shift change. That's for safety reasons, so you get as many of the guys out of the line as you could. Alright, so our mucking chamber. Now, the rock that you see down here, that's pretty much what the rock would have looked like after the dynamite went off. At the start of the next shift, you're going to have two guys come down here. It's their job to remove this muck. So they were simply called muckers. In 1904, they were given a very special tool to use. That's right. They had a special name for it, though. They called it their muck stick. Very, very original with their names down here. With this muck stick, with this small little shovel, they had to remove a lot of this stuff. 16 tons a day. It's very difficult work. We're going to make them use their muck stick right up until the 1920s. And that was when the mucking machine here was invented. Uh, it used to 
using this machine, we can actually remove a lot more of that much. Instead of removing 16 tons in their eight hour shift, this machine removes 20 tons in a single hour. So definitely a lot more. There's one more piece of equipment I want to show you guys, and it was actually the most important piece of equipment that they ever had down here. So this very important piece of equipment is not an ice cream truck. It's not a lunch cart or beer truck or anything like that. It's way more important than that. Is it WC? Yeah. <laughs> it is our honey wagon. I know it doesn't look like much today, but back when this thing was in use, it was considered a luxury. Our miners love this. One guy that it's not so awesome for. <laughs> Yeah, the guy that has to push it around, right? He's also responsible for cleaning it out. So we gave that job to a very special employee. We gave that job to the new guy. There's actually a pretty good reason that this was your first job, not so much to give the new guy a hard time, so that if you're new here, you're not familiar with the layout of the line. By pushing around the honey wagon, it's going to give you a chance to get to know all of your fellow workers. Way better than you would have liked, right? <laughs> Privacy wasn't really a big issue, though. Remember what I said about the lights? Yeah, <laughs> Let's turn off the lights. Oh, there we go. So yeah, literally you can't see the hand in front of your face, right? And we actually have tons of light coming into the tunnel down here. We're really close to the surface. But these guys, they were deep into the mountain. No outside light. And 1904, no battery powered headlamps either. They hadn't been invented yet. So 1904, you're going to bring with you, you're very trusty. Handle. So at least it was very romantic for our miners down here. But there you go. So that's all the light that they had to work with. In 1919, they come out with this very cool device here. Oh, look at that. It's our carbide lamp. Oh, that's crazy. Right. So let's take a closer look. It actually works just like a lighter. So you have a wheel here, there's a piece of flint behind it, the gas comes out of that nozzle. So light it, cover up the front, spark it just like that. I know. I feel like I should just do it for 45 minutes. I know, over and over again, right? That is our carbide lamp. Very, very cool. Definitely my favorite part of the tour. 1937, that's when our first battery powered headlamps came out. They look pretty similar to the one I'm wearing on my head today. They last for your full eight hour shift on one charge. Any other questions? Okay, before we leave the tunnels, Anyway. <laughs> so the big gray building you guys see there, that's mill number three. So that was actually the third mill that they had here. It took 18 months to build and it cost the company one million dollars. That was a million dollars back in 1921. That was some serious money. That's right, it is Fool's Gold, uh, also known as Calco Pirate. I feel like I should just do it for 45 minutes. I know, over and over again, right? But there we go. So that is our carbide lamp. Very, very cool. Definitely my favorite part of the tour.